Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be discussing some time as it as it applies to a combat in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Um, time in uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons is a little bit different if you like to play later editions, especially like fifth edition. Um, time is really different in there. It's almost non-existent in fifth edition. It becomes it's actually pretty important in the earlier editions. And there's actually a pretty good reason for that. Um, in just a normal day-to-day uh, -day dungeon delve, a normal turn is just uh, 10 minutes. Now, a normal turn could be you're just wandering the corridor, checking for traps, listening at doors, lighting your torch, you know, just kind of your general general. Uh, dungeoneering type of tasks or if you're out in the wilderness you can, it can be checking the trees or you know kind of try, trying to stay on the path or you know as so you measure your trigger uh, turns in like a 10 minute interval and that can even be longer intervals days weeks months you know whatever it makes sense but when you get into combat all that kind of slows down um instead of being a, a turn you call it a round so a round is what you call it in combat. And a round is the equivalent, or 10 rounds is the equivalent of one turn. So that means that each round is a minute or 60 seconds. So one round is 60 seconds. Now you can divide a round up into a segment. So a segment is just six seconds. And of course there's 10 segments in a round because there are 60 seconds in, in, a, a, in a minute. So six times 10 is 60. So there are 10 segments in one round. Now that becomes kind of important when you are considering things like spells and the other actions that can happen. Because in one really neat thing that you do in like this version is you recalculate initiative every time. That sounds like it might slow things down, but really it's not that slow. And it kind of really changes the whole dynamic of every round. Instead of knowing that I'm going to go after the monster, the monster's going to hit me first, and if I survive, then I can hit the monster back, and the monster's going to hit me, and then I can hit the monster, and kind of you keep, you keep rolling until the monster's dead. Instead, everything is more fluid and dynamic. The monster might go first. You might go first. The archer might go before you. The wizard might go after you. The cleric might go first, or the cleric might hold their turn until the very end so they can heal whoever needs needs healing. Things become a lot more fluid, a lot more dynamic as the battle changes, as, as the things move around the battlefield. People might choose to set a charge. They might choose to just approach normally so that they can't get, you know, the, the defender can't set their weapons and attack them back for double damage. I mean, there's all kinds of just uh, exciting things that can happen in the battlefield when you run it. At, with the uh, with the individual segments and by recalculating um, initiative every turn. Um, before we get too deep into that, though, just the, know that the first three, well, usually the first two, maybe the first three segments could be um, a surprise round in there. And the last four segments are probably where the spells are going to go off. It's where the uh, people with held actions are, are going to go. It's uh, if you have a uh, two um, dual combat type of, of a thing, maybe a haste or you're a fighter and you, and, and you can attack twice, you're going to attack again at the end. So there's lots of interesting things that can happen that are kind of split up over the course of the entire battle.
So for example, if there's a surprise round, and there isn't always going to be a surprise round, a surprise round is only really going to happen if the DM determines that what, there's a chance of one side or the other, or both sides could be surprised. You know, if uh, one side's w walking down a tunnel with torches lit and singing chanties as they go, and then the other side is hiding somewhere, then, you know, the side that's not paying the least bit of attention might be surprised. Um, it could be that both our gr groups are just creeping down the, the tunnel, um, trying to remain hidden, trying to be quiet, and they might, might not either be surprised because they're being very observant and very cautious. Like so, one side could be surprised. Neither side could be surprised, or it's possible that both sides could be surprised, and that's for the DM to determine based upon what the party's doing, what what, uh, and what the monsters or the um, the uh, other com combatants might be up to. So to determine surprise is very simple. You just roll two d six, one for each group, and then and look at this scenario right here. I got a one and a two. That means that um, they're both actually surprised. One is a little bit less surprised than the other. So the one that uh, got the one. So they'll both actually be surprised for segment one. Okay, So neither one of them get to go on segment one. On segment two, the red, whoever the red dice is could go. But they're the only ones that can act on segment two. So they'll get like maybe some free attacks. They might get to start their charge. They could start casting a spell. You know, they could maybe turn, decide to turn and flee. That other group just looks, you know, that's a big dragon up there and I'm a first level character and, I'm, and I have the opportunity to turn and run. I might be turning and running at that point. Or I might be, you know, charging in ready to uh, make my attack. Um, then finally, at segment three, both red and blue um, finally get to start acting, okay, because the surprise is done. So at that point, both sides roll um, initiative, and whoever, and you're rolling for the opposite group. So in this case, the blue group, they rolled the, th the uh, three, the red group gets it. The red group rolled the five, but the blue group gets it. So you're rolling for the other group's initiative. So in this case, um, red is going to go on initiative three because blue rolled for red. And blue is going to go on five because red ruled, rolled for blue. So... That's just it, it, it. I know that feels backwards, and I think some a lot of people have house ruled it. You're just rolling your own, so and if you're rolling your own, then blue would have went on three and red on five. But the rules as written is that actually red goes on three and blue goes on five because you roll each other's. Now there could be somebody in your party that has a reaction adjustment and can move themselves on the initiative order. So you might have a party member who's going out of turn from the rest of their party. But then it just simply goes in order. Um, so nobody got to go. Red got to go. Red gets to go again. So and, there, and if Red had cast a spell back here, that there could a possible on, turn, on segment four, a spell could be going off because it was cast back here. Or it could it could have been a one segment spell or a two you know if it was a two segment spell back here or a one segment spell here on three, then that spell could be going off on four, which could be affecting the party here, the the blue group. Finally, the blue group gets to go and make their actions. They, that's when they would cast their spells. That's when they would make their attacks. Um, and that's you know they could. Uh, finally go you know and then their their spell might go here off here if they had like a two segment spell if somebody in the red group say the cleric said i'm going to hold my action then finally the cleric the red cleric might be going way out here at the end because they held their action okay 
Uh, and then finally, if uh, there was fighters who had uh, multiple attacks, the second attacks could be happening out here. From, you know, a, fi a fighter who made their first attack on segment three, then they might be making their second attack out there on segment nine. Um, just because of the... So that's why it's... The segments are actually make it quite interesting because the next turn, when you take your next turn, guess what? You're going to re-roll that initiative. You're not going to have surprise anymore, but you are going to re-roll initiative again. So in this case, and interestingly enough, they both rolled five. That means that they're both going to go at the same time simultaneously on segment five. So unless somebody has a uh, has a modifier that gets them out of that uh, out of segment five, then they're going to go simultaneously. Which means that if both the fighter and the monster hit each other with enough um, force to kill the other, they both kill each other, and they both die because everything's happening simultaneously when the initiative numbers match like this or when the segment numbers match. So that's why it's kind of really neat and interesting how the, uh, how the segments can really change the entire battle. Um, and if you think about it, it really does make sense. If you're in a, in a battle, you're swinging swords, or if you ever watch, uh, um, groups of people fighting on, uh, various, uh, um, uh, wrestling type programs, but not wrestling, but actually more true to life type stuff. Um, you'll see they're just all over the place. You got groups that start pounding on each other. Then all of a sudden one will break away and somebody else will come in and start pounding on them. So it really does make more sense that the, that the battle is constantly fluxing. The battle is constantly changing because after this, after all 10 of these segments go off, initiative is rolled again. And this time, you know, it's going to be, uh, red's going to get to go first again, uh, because red gets the uh, four and blue gets the six. Then after that, um, red's going to get the four and blue's going to get the six and it'll get some better rolls here. Uh, red's going to get the six and blue's going to get the one. So, bl bl um, Red, who is getting that one, they can cast maybe a spell that takes three or four or five segments to go off because, you know, a little bit higher level spell now, because now they're going to have time for that spell to go off and affect the other group. Whereas before, maybe they were like focusing in because they're, they're, uh, Segments were so close together, or they were coming after that they would have to cast a spell, and it might be going off when the next turn started, even. So it's possible for some of those spells, and if they, if you were to cast them late enough, that they might even be going off in in the next round. Um, so, or not the next, yeah, in in the next round, not the not not the next turn, but uh, it's kind of rare for a uh, complete combat to last more than ten rounds, although it possibly could, in which case a full turn would have passed. And if you, especially if it's a small horde of creatures that you're fighting, or maybe it's a big creature that you spend some time getting position and maybe doing some, some other small tactical things that uh, you might build up to where you've got 10 minutes going off. Um, but yeah, so that's the uh, segment, the combat segment. And it's kind of a really, you know, it's kind of a neat feature in the earlier Dungeons and Dragons because it's uh, it really changes the entire tactics of the entire battle. It's like I said, it's not just okay, I'm gonna attack with my sword. Okay, I cast magic missile. Okay, I'll sit here again for another 20 minutes until it's my turn again because nothing's really gonna impact me. Instead, it's constantly, like I said, constantly changing constantly fluxing and there could be lots of different exciting things that are happening and you might be you know you're gonna have to pay attention okay i need to go attack again or my spell is gonna go off or i'm gonna hold so that uh, i can go ahead and heal those idiots when they get done with their charge or you know all those other interesting things that that can, that can go on during a uh, a, a uh, combat 
So I hope you enjoyed this video and um, thanks. Uh, like and subscribe. I guess that's the YouTube th sayings. So thank you.